All right, my friends, the good old Nicholas is finally back again with another review, rather late in fact. Today I'm taking a look at the Gainward RTX 2070 Phoenix GS, the GS standing for Golden Sample, so it apparently should be a pretty good model. Although Gainward might not be as common to some of you, but they're quite well known over here in Europe. I've had this lying around for quite some time now, and in my opinion this could very well be the best RTX graphics card Nvidia has blessed us with for now. Not in terms of performance, but when it comes down to overall package you're getting for the price. The RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti do cost a fair bit more as we know. And as always I'm one of the last to bring you guys a review of the RTX 2070. But you know what's great about being late? nothing. I'm sure there will be some mocking me for the fact, but sure go ahead and feel free to do so. The last couple of weeks were exhausting really, there was a lot going on and I also wanted to bring you guys Battlefield 5 tests. These are now included. Alright, what's there to say about pricing? At the time of this video we are talking of about 550 to 630 US dollars in the end really depending on your country and where you purchase from. One thing I can tell you right away, with this card you're scratching the performance level of the RTX 2080. But is all that investment worth it and should you get yourself this model by Gainward if you have the option to? Alright, something that's immediately noticeable is the length of this card. With its 292mm it's one hell of a long graphics card, which might not even fit into each and every case out there. I find it interesting the actual PCB is shorter, it's just that Gainward decided to go for this overlapping cooler to increase that cooling capacity. If you're into this whole overlapping thing, that's entirely up to you. Let me just say, it's not my thing. Something similar can be seen on certain RTX. RTX 2080s by Zotac. And since we've already talked about the PCB, you've surely noticed there's no backplate. I mean, it's nice seeing a naked PCB once in a while, but at five, six hundred dollars or more, a backplate is expected. It's a shame there's none. The whole shroud on the other hand, despite the majority being plastic, makes a robust impression. The silver parts on there are out of aluminum by the way. Now the fans do look a bit simple, they are however pretty quiet in operation and seem to do a good job. Important here is the fact these fans do not actually turn off under light loads and idle, something that should be fairly common these days. All three fans are spinning permanently even if you're staring at the Windows desktop the whole day. I sure would have liked seeing a semi-passive solution here. Silence freaks however do not worry, the fans on idle are very very quiet. Under load they're certainly audible but not loud, at least from my understanding of loud. Out. Let's cover the specs now though, there's something important to be said here. A RTX 2070 does not always necessarily equal a RTX 2070, just so you know. You've surely noticed there are 2070s out there costing significantly less than certain other models carrying this same 2070 batch. And this time around it's not the cooling solution that makes up the difference, there actually are two different 2070 chips. One is better, the other significantly slower. I couldn't test the slower one myself yet, though. The good GPU variant is named TU-106-400AA1, whereas the worst one is missing that A letter following the 400. I find this to be unfair of Nvidia, nowhere do they clarify which 2070 you're actually buying. In the GPU database by Tech Power Up, you can check it out all yourself, even though there aren't all models in the list. Other than that, the specs are looking good. Of course compared to an RTX 2080 there are less RT and Tensor cores on board. What I do like though is that even with a 2070 we are getting the full video outputs seen on more expensive models. 3 times display port, 1 HDMI and even 1 USB type C output. As for power, a PCIe 8 pin as well as 6 pin connectors needed. And some surely have noticed by now, no NVLink or SLI connectors on board for a multi GPU setup. Not that it's a necessity, but one sure does notice how Nvidia is slowly tinkering.
working with their official multi-GPU support in their performance classes. In the previous Pascal generation, it was the GTX 1060 that didn't allow for SLI. Now it's the rather high level of an RTX 2070 that is banned from SLI or NVLink. Doesn't affect the majority of us, but it's something I've noticed. Now how about that FPS doubling feature RGB? Well, for my taste, the lighting was implemented in a bit of a weird way. Just the center of the card does light up a bit, and that's it. Also, that so-called expert tool by Gainward is not that great, especially when it comes to controlling the RGB LEDs. Sometimes you could run into problems setting colors and applying effects. But oh well, at least we have many options for colors. Nonetheless, Gainward as well as Gigabyte both need to rework their software. And yeah, other than that, in terms of build quality and design, not a bad card. The aesthetics are as always a matter of personal preference. This one's not really my taste, but the rest of it could convince me. So there's only one thing left to talk about, performance. Wow, hats off to Nvidia. The performance is looking really good at the price of $550 to $630. Finally, an RTX card that slotted in there better in terms of price to performance ratio. As you've seen in the charts in games with the RTX 2070, that is with the good A chip, we are getting dangerously close to the next higher performance class, the RTX 2080 and even GTX 1080 Ti from time to time. Sure, that's not to be seen in each and every game title, but there are a few that paint this kind of picture. So for gaming at a resolution of 1440p, the RTX 2070 is one extraordinarily good graphics card. And even at 4K, D2070 can hold its ground as long as you're ready to lower some graphic settings in game. While testing, I also did keep an eye on the GPU clock, and that one is looking amazing. The card most of the time boosts itself up to like 1935 MHz, which is pretty damn good already. In an upcoming video of mine, I'll show you how much more can be squeezed out by manually overclocking this GPU even further. The new game Battlefield 5 is running great with this card too, very smoothly. This also happens to be the very first game to support the new RTX ray tracing feature. Unfortunately, the results are rather lackluster. We are not even talking of ultra anymore and things aren't looking too good at low either when it comes down to frame rates. The ray tracing feature in itself is working great, I love the realism. However, it is unclear whether it's the optimization for ray tracing that's at fault here or the GPUs themselves. The performance is far from impressive, even with the 2080 Ti with DXR on. I did hear about Nvidia and the Battlefield 5 developers teaming up to improve the performance by up to 50% in the next upcoming update. We'll see. As you've seen yourselves, the temperatures are looking incredibly good, so there actually would be no reason for the overlapping cooler, which would only throw off certain 
potential buyers due to the length. And what I've seen on my watt meter is nothing short of amazing. We are talking of a power draw in the level of a GTX 1070. This might be one of the only few similarities between the two. The power consumption of the RTX 2070 for the offered performance is truly phenomenal. So I can only repeat myself, the RTX 2070 did make for a pleasant surprise. I initially expected yet another slightly overpriced graphics card, which is not the case at all here. There however are some minor flaws with this Phoenix GS designed by Gainward. I personally would have liked seeing a backplate, a semi-passive cooler and a slightly better implementation of RGB lighting. The latter not really being something too serious though. The RTX 2070, at least the 8-chip variant, could therefore convince me it's a good card. It's only Gainward that disappointed me a little with some of their poor design choices. Which is why I'm giving this GPU my silver award instead of gold. Thanks to all of you that have watched this video to the very end. Quite a long topic again.